Good morning guys. Today we're going to repair the left front axle seal on the 2000 Suburban. Let me show you what we got here. This is a front diff. You can see the fill plug and the drain plug and significant uh, leakage of gear oil there. And it's coming right from the axle seal area. So let's give it a go. Just a word of suggestion, before you start uh, this task, it's probably worthwhile putting it into four high as you roll it into the garage, because what that ha does is it locks the front wheels together, and so it, it makes it less likely the front wheels will turn as you're trying to pull off some of these uh, nuts. Well, those of you who have done this before will know that the axle nut can be a bit of a bear. I tried to remove the dust cap but without removing the wheel, because it's easier to remove the axle nut with the wheel on the ground, but I'm not able to do that. So I'm going to remove the lug nuts, jack the vehicle up, chalk the wheels, and we'll have a look at that castle nut. Now you need to get this dust cap off right here, so I just take a screwdriver and tap this way and then pry. You want to try not to damage it so much that you need to replace it. This is a 35 millimeter nut. I thought I might have to put the wheel back on to use a long extension, but I think my air tools are going to do it this time. And I'll take this off. Behind here there's a washer. I'll just take this off for safekeeping. Okay, I've got the vehicle on jack stands and I'm using the jack to support the skid plate which has to come off. There are four bolts here and these are 15 millimeter bolts. By letting the jack take the weight of the skid plate, it makes it a little easier to take off. Okay, now I want to make sure that the hub isn't trapped in the knuckle, and so I just tap here, and you can see it move. All right, I may as well drain the fluid off. Now, this is the fill um, bolt. It's a 15 millimeter, and the drain bolt is a 13 millimeter. Uh, just following good practice, I'll uh, open this one first, and then drain this one off. This is the lower drain nut, and you can see it's got what looks like a magnetic part to it with some debris in the bottom. It doesn't look particularly bad. Let's clean that off. Okay, while that fluid's draining, let's just no identify some normal structures. This is the upper control arm with the upper ball joint, and lower control arm with the lower ball joint in behind. Um, this is the stabilizer bar here, stabilizer uh, joint here. I think we're going to have to undo this bolt right here. And uh, of course this is the outer tie rod. And the drive shaft that we need to remove is right here. While we're waiting for that to drain, let's undo the stabilizer bar link. This bar right here. The whole shaft turns, but it's threaded up top. Okay, I've put the fill and drain plugs back in for safekeeping. Now I'm going to hit the um, bolts with penetrating oil. Well, there are not many situations where it's actually a disadvantage to have a lift, but here I've got, uh, I'm using just um, jack stands, and so I can block this wheel and prevent the wheel from turning, and that allows me to hold the axle stable as I turn off these bolts here. And so, um, as long as I'm in four-wheel drive, this works fine. data they have a technical bulletin saying that this may be difficult to get out. Uh, they suggest using a slide hammer, attach it onto here and pull, but it's not a direct pull. I may have to do that, but um, of course you don't want to pry on the case, but uh, I'm trying to, I've got a pry bar into a piece of metal on the frame up higher, and I'm just tapping this way. So far I'm not getting anywhere. Okay, well this was definitely the hardest part. 
And I tried to put a slide hammer on here, but I couldn't get a straight pull, so the slide hammer idea didn't work very well. I ended up just beating on it from this end and rotating, and uh, all of a sudden it just slid out for me. So let's just slide this out the rest of the way. There we are, there's my seal. So let's look at what we've just taken off. This is the old seal. This is the outside and the inside. You can see where I've pried on it to get it out. It doesn't look very remarkable. It looks very similar to the seal on the right side. And then here's the half shaft and this is where that C-clip gave us all the problem. The C-clip rides in this groove and I did expect to see the C-clip come out with this but it, it didn't come out on my vehicle anyway. And I was a little concerned that the C-clip may have been broken or left inside in a malpositioned way. And so I slid a boreoscope into the female accepting pathway. And I can see that C-clip that's sitting in the right position. It's not broken or twisted. And so I think we're, all our systems are go for putting in the new seal and then sliding this back into place. Okay, you can see I've taken a bit of time and I've cleaned it all off here. Now I wanted to draw your attention to this tube here. This is the vent tube and uh, this plastic tube was hooked in there, I just pulled it off. Now what I've done is I've hooked up shop air to this part here and it's patent, it, the end of it goes into the engine compartment beside the battery there. And then um, this one here, I put a little plastic tube on it and blew and, and it's patent as well. It's always a good practice whenever you change a seal to make sure the vent tubes aren't blocked. Okay, I've put a very tiny amount of RTV blue onto this seal. I'm sure there'll be controversy about that point, but uh, in this case there was a bit of a deep scratch in the mating metal surface and uh, there's no coating that comes with this particular seal. So I'm just going to use the RTV. Got a big socket here. We'll just tap this into place. Now I'm going to put just a dab of wheel bearing grease right on the, the lip of the seal. Maybe a bit too much. So I've taken a wire wheel to this back side and cleaned it up. And I'm going to put just a little bit of gear oil. This is 80W90 gear oil on the splines just to allow it to go in a little easier. Now let's slide the shaft in. There, I felt it click in, and we're about the same distance off of the uh, edge of the case as we were before. It's about a millimeter off the edge of the case, and uh, I can't pull it out. And so that surf clip went on a lot easier than it than it came off. And similarly, before the CV axle goes in, I'm just putting a dab of wheel bearing grease on these splines to allow it to go well. I've cleaned it off really nicely. Okay, let's slide this axle back in. I've got the key in the ignition so the steering is unlocked in case I need to push or pull the rotor to make it fit more easily. We're going in the same way it came out. Okay, I've snugged these all up with a regular wrench and uh, it's worthwhile noting that when you lay like this you can move the whole thing with your opposite foot and it's interesting to note that when you move the one tire forward the other one goes backwards. So now I'm just going to go around and torque these. The torque spec on these bolts is 58 foot-pounds. The dealer's manual calls for you to replace this hub nut. It's a de dealer only item. 
I switch sides on the camera so that I can be on this side pushing down with the torque wrench. Unfortunately, I need to use an extension to clear the body chassis, but in any case, the torque here is 177 foot-pounds. In my experience, the commonest mistake in life in general is the oversight, and so don't forget to put oil in it. Uh, remember, it's gear oil, not regular engine oil. Okay, there's all kinds of different ways of doing this next part, and one thing you know about uh, something where there's a lot of different options is that none of them are perfect. Otherwise, the perfect option would be the one that everybody does. But what I'm going to do to get myself close is I'm going to pour my gear oil into the top of this tube while standing up. And I don't want to overshoot because the vehicle's actually took back a little bit. And to use that as a little more, uh, Chev say that the optimal fluid level is 12 millimeters below the bottom of the tube, which makes it complicated. But in any case, we're going to uh, purposely underfill it for a moment get the wheels back on and put it down and then do a final uh, check uh, after the wheels are on the ground and the vehicle's uh, resting. And then don't forget the stabilizer shaft link here comes apart in three pieces. Now um, you slide this up into there and there was a TSB in about 2005 that said that although the torque spec is 89 inch pounds on this they actually want to be sure that there's at least two or three threads sticking out the top and so it sounds like it's more the total position rather than the uh, torque itself that's the most important part. So just to uh, emphasize, on this stabilizer shaft link right here, you want between two and four threads sticking up through there. We're back on the ground now. These tires get torqued to 140 foot-pounds. Okay, I've got the vehicle off the jack stands. I've taken the fill plug out, now I'm just going to measure the depth. This would be a lot easier if they just made it at the level of a fill plug, but GM say 12 millimeters below the level of the plug, which I presume is the level of the bottom of the plug. I'm using this little piece of wire to check my level. Well, we've just changed out the left front axle seal in a 2000 Suburban. Overall, I'd say it was a bit more difficult than I thought, mainly because of that C-clip. Uh, although I can't say I wasn't warned, there is a TSB about that issue. Say, uh, if this video helped you out and you want to see more of them, hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. I'd love to hear what others say. Thanks for watching.